Hello everyone, welcome back to Analog Snippets. As in any other technical field, switching converters are replete with acronyms and terminologies. So in this video, I want to unpack some of those acronyms. This will also set the stage for the future videos. So let's begin. Normally, a switching converter is shown to contain a switch, a diode, an inductor and a capacitor apart from an input voltage source and output load. Switch is often shown to be controlled by a PWM signal with a duty D. This is an example of an asynchronous converter. This is asynchronous because we don't need to synchronize the turning off of this switch and turning on of this diode. The diode turns on and off pretty much on its own. And this asynchronous behavior is obviously advantageous because it simplifies the design. But most of the modern integrated converters are not designed that way. And the reason is that this diode has a large drop across it. And this large drop reduces the converter efficiency. In most designs, this diode is replaced with another switch. And with this change, we have synchronous buck. This new switch has a much smaller drop and hence it gives a much better efficiency. But it causes more design problems as well. Notice that now there is a distinct possibility that we can end up shorting supply and ground if both the switches are on. And that is a very undesirable situation. And that is because these switches are designed to be very low impedance switches. So now we need to synchronize the turning on and off of these switches and hence the name synchronous converters. Notice that this shorting of supply and ground can never happen in asynchronous converters. So they are safe by architecture. In synchronous converter, we need to make sure that these switches are never turned on simultaneously. We first turn off the switch and then turn on the other switch. And in doing so, we introduce so-called dead time. This type of switching is also known as break before make switching. The switch closer to supply is known as high side switch and the switch closer to ground is known as low side switch. Low side switch is almost always an NMOS switch, while high side switch can be realized using both NMOS and PMOS. During that time when both switches are off, the conduction happens through body diodes. So there is still conduction happening through diode even in synchronous converters. But that diode conduction duration is fairly small, typically a few nanoseconds. Okay, so that is all about synchronous and asynchronous converters for now. We will have much more to say about synchronous converters in future videos. Our next topic is continuous versus discontinuous conduction mode. One of the most important signals in switching converters is inductor current. And you are probably already aware of ramping up and ramping down nature of the inductor current. This is an example of inductor current in CCM operation. This inductor current waveform is continuous in the sense that it is either always ramping up or ramping down. There is no duration when this current is zero or flat. When the load current increases, this whole waveform moves up. And when the load current decreases, this comes down. Now let's consider an asynchronous buck converter and consider what happens at very low load currents. As this waveform comes down with the reducing load, there comes a point when the valley or the lowest point of this waveform becomes zero. What would happen if we reduce the load further? If we continue to go with the same slope, the current wants to go negative. But the diode being a diode cannot conduct negative currents. So inductor currents become zero in this duration. And this is known as discontinuous conduction mode or DCM. So you can see from here that CCM has two kinds of sub intervals. The so called T on when switch is on and current ramps up. And T off when switch is off and diode is conducting and current ramps down. But DCM has a third sub interval. When switch is still off and diode is also not conducting. The CCM mode is easier to understand and analyze. But DCM analysis can be more involved. This input output equation of a buck converter is in fact a CCM equation. This relationship does not depend on the load current, at least to the first order. This input output relation for DCM looks like this. Looks scary, right? And for this reason, many designers try to avoid DCM. 
But DCM has many advantages. It is easiest to stabilize converter in DCM. And efficiency in DCM is often better than CCM. We will have more to say about DCM in future videos. The boundary between CCM and DCM when the valley current is exactly zero is also known as critical conduction mode or boundary conduction mode. So for asynchronous converters, we don't really have a choice. At low load currents, the converter will enter DCM. But for the synchronous converters, we do have a choice. There, we may decide to never enter DCM. So let's see how does that happen. So here we have replaced the diode with a low side switch. There is an important difference between a switch and a diode. Unlike diode, the switch can conduct current in both directions. So at low load conditions, when inductor current reaches zero and the switch is still on, current will keep on going with the same slope. So you can see that inductor current has become negative, but the still hole operation is in CCM. Notice that in DCM, the inductor current is always positive and that means it can only support positive load currents. But in this kind of CCM, you can support even the negative load currents. Now this can give you an impression that synchronous converters probably cannot operate in DCM. But that is not true. You can detect the zero cross of the inductor and depending on that you can turn off the low side switch. Sometimes this kind of operation is known as diode emulation mode. And it is because we are trying to emulate a diode behavior using a bidirectional switch. On the other hand, the always CCM mode is also known as reverse CCM or forced CCM mode. Okay, that is all about CCM and DCM in this video. Our next acronyms are PWM and PFM. In PWM, the switching frequency is kept constant and we modulate or change the pulse width. And this is probably the most familiar type of modulation in switching converters. But this is by no means the only type of modulation. We can very well decide to keep the width of the pulse constant and change the frequency. Constant on time or COT is one of the ways we can implement PFM. COT can also stand for constant off time and which is confusingly also a way to implement PFM. But here we will discuss constant on time. In constant on time scheme, whenever the switch is turned on, it is turned on for a fixed duration. Whenever this fixed on time duration elapses, the switch turns off and there is a minimum off duration built into the system. And this minimum T off along with this constant fixed T on determines the highest switching frequency. And near the maximum load current, this converter will probably operate very close to the maximum switching frequency. But this off time is free to get bigger if the load current reduces. And near the minimum load current, this switching frequency can be very small. And for this reason, PFM can be very efficient at low load currents. As opposed to this, PWM keeps switching at a constant frequency. But there is a way to improve efficiency in PWM as well. And this is known as skip mode operation. At low load currents, we can decide to skip some of the PWM pulses. One of the disadvantages of PFM is that the frequency spectrum can be all over the place. And it especially becomes a problem if it starts to enter the audio frequency range. So PFM usually comes with a guaranteed minimum switching frequency as well. Okay, so that is all about PWM and PFM in this video. Our final acronyms are VMC and CMC. Switching converters almost always contain a negative feedback loop to regulate the voltage. Voltage mode control refers to conventional single loop feedback control. Current mode control or current program control is a dual loop feedback solution. Both contain an error amplifier which generates a control voltage. In voltage mode control, this control voltage is compared against a voltage ramp signal. Current mode control does not have a dedicated ramp generator. Rather, it makes use of the natural ramp in the inductor current waveform. One of the most common implementation is peak current control. In this scheme, the peak current of inductor is measured and compared against the control voltage. Here RS is used to convert the inductor current into the voltage. 
In practice, current of the switches are sensed and compared against the control voltage. So you can see the dual loop in CMC structure. The first loop is the voltage loop which is coming via this VC voltage. And second loop is this inductor current sense loop. Eventually these two loops are combined to generate the PWM signal. Now we need to sense the inductor current even in voltage mode control. This in order to protect the converter against excessive currents. In current mode control this comes free with the scheme. Another advantage of CMC is that because of this feedback around this inductor, the pole associated with inductor goes away. And that means CMC can use a simpler compensation scheme. On the flip side, the CMC tends to be unstable when duty cycle exceeds 50%. At high duty, CMC breaks into subharmonic oscillations. And in order to fix that, it needs more design efforts. CMC is by far the most commonly used control techniques in DC-DC converters. But there is another scheme which is becoming popular these days. And it is called hysteretic control. But that is a topic for another video. So in this video I have tried to explain some of the commonly used terms in switching converter universe. I am going to use these terms frequently in future switching converter videos. And I hope that this video will help you understand the switching converter literature better. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.